Lately I've been quite frustrated because it's almost been a full year since I started this game and I still haven't fully realized the game concept for Luminous Realms. Initially I was going to design a game in a similar style to Kingdom Hearts where each world would be split up into different areas that the player has to traverse through. But the problem with that world design is it would take way too much work to design each single different area and making sure certain sections aren't accessed too soon depending on where the player is in the story. And overall it's just very hard to make that kind of world design especially when I'm just one indie developer. But then I found these two really cool indie games called A Short Hike and Little Gator Game. In A Short Hike, you play as a bird that is trying to get to the top of the mountain by hiking, climbing, and flying around on this cute little island. And in Little Gator Game, you play as this really cute little gator who goes around on an island trying to find people to befriend and play games with. And you do that by climbing, gliding, surfing, and swimming around while battling cardboard carrot monsters. Both of these games give so much freedom in the game and they allow the player to play however they want, without any restrictions on where to go and how to do things and in what order to play the game. And this is quite different in contrast to how the world is designed in games like Kingdom Hearts or Final Fantasy where a lot of the times you just have to follow a more linear progression in the story and going any other path would just be impossible and the game would end up blocking you or walling you off from certain sections of the game. And this sort of world design makes it much easier to build worlds, especially as an indie developer where you don't have a huge team of developers to create complex worlds and linear stories. The idea is basically that you're able to create a world with different things to do in it and no specific order that the player has to go through to do all the activities in the game and that would reduce a lot of development time and testing to make sure the player doesn't go certain areas that he's not supposed to go to and things like that. And sort of goes back to the concept in Zelda Breath of the Wild where you can just go anywhere in the game after you finish the Great Plateau tutorial section of the game and you can literally just go straight to the final boss without even doing anything else and that's how some speedrunners finish the game where they just fly straight to the final boss in the game. And with that kind of structure you just don't have to restrict the player in so many ways and just allow them to freely go wherever they want. And I feel this creates a much more fun way for players to play the game and just create their own journey and their own story. By the way, you can support me on Patreon, where you can get early sneak peeks, progress updates, concept art, and a bunch of other things. Your name will also be mentioned in the game's credits and in my videos. You can now also wishlist Luminous Realms on Steam. I then spent an entire month just designing and planning out all the different things I can do in my world and planned out mechanics and features that would support it. And then I created an entire timeline to plan out the game's development from start to finish. Now I have a set date in mind for when I would like the game to finish, but I want to take it easy and just see how it goes. During game development, so many things happen and change, so you never know. So I don't want to put any date yet, but it's just to keep myself in check and to make sure I don't steer off the development path too much. And after I was done with all the planning, I went back to developing the game. And the first thing I made was making a full game loop. I basically decided that the game would start with an intro sequence and then move on to the world where it would start the player in the beginning of the world and then have a final boss at the end of it where after beating him an ending sequence will play and then the game would go to the end credits and back to the main menu. And with that I had a full game loop going on and I can just keep reiterating on it and building out the game and adding more things and anytime someone could play the game they could just play the whole experience with certain things missing but still having a full game loop going on. I then create a base world with an ocean and a small island that I will keep expanding and growing as I develop the world and add things to it. And with this whole new way of traversing the world, I had to add some new mechanics and replace some older ones. And I started with a climbing mechanic where I previously had a hanging ability where you could hang off ledges, but with this more open world kind of world design, I would want the player to be able to reach more higher areas in the world. And I felt using the current jumping and hanging mechanic was just not enough for that. And now with this new climbing mechanic, you're able to reach much higher areas in the game and be able to climb anything in the world like trees, buildings, mountains, and any kind of structure. I'm really curious to see how that will push players to exploring the world more and trying to experiment with reaching different spots in the game. After that, I replaced my old gliding system, which was a little too similar to the Kingdom Hearts gliding ability, where the player would just be flying like Peter Pan. And with my new direction to the game, I think it would be more appropriate to have a gliding system that's more like a paraglider. But we'll see, it might change to something else in the future depending on how I design the story. But for now, it's more this kind of style of gameplay, where the player would be able to glide from one high spot in the game to another area and be able to reach areas that he couldn't go to before. I'm also thinking of adding areas where there will be an updraft kind of thing going on, that when you glide over, it will give you an extra boost and push you up to be able to reach more further away places using the paraglider. And now that the game has an ocean and potentially also rivers and lakes, I think it would make sense to have a swimming mechanic. And so I added that to the game where the player can swim around and get across rivers and lakes. I'm not quite sure if I should add a diving mechanic. It will all depend on what I want to do with water and like if I want to put any treasures under a lake or a river, kind of like how they do in Zelda Breath of the Wild. But we'll have to see with that. While I implement more stuff to the game, check out my previous videos. And shout out to my gold patrons Legend64, Pluvius, Ijaz, Rat Poison, Cobra Code, Tina Y, 
شين كير كاب هيد بوترسون كلينيكلي ان فاني بريت كرونن سوبر سانيك نيثن اوزورث كاريك لام اند محمد نبيل اليافعي Until next time, peace.